Whoa! Kaiju says hell church. I didn't even get to say anything. No, you don't. Well, you just did. Oh. Well, I want to at least say this. Look how beautiful our living room looks. Oh, I know. Yeah, we, we super cleaned the fuck out of our living room like a few days ago. Yeah. Because the, the invasion is still happening outside, so. Yeah. Got rid of their stupid ass rug. Yeah. Mop the entire floor. Yep. I didn't realize we had a floor. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, that's me when I clean up my room. I'm just like, oh, shit. Is that what the color of it looks like? I remember my old room used to be get, used to get really fucking messy. Oh, the one at uh, Yeah, the one at our old place. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's like how we almost said the address. We're like, uh, no. Uh, schwa the roll call. Schwa that roll call. Kaiju Sentai Ultra Ranger, the show where we talk about Ultraman's past, present, future, Godzilla, and all kaiju in between. I'm your host, Ultra Pinkaster Lane. I really, really miss doing that. Well, season four is almost upon us, so we'll get to you soon. I miss it so much. I know you do, Dad. That's why I said I would only be host for season three. Half of season three. Can you introduce yourself? And I am your co-host. That's right. Slash creator. Slash Ultra Lord. <laughs> slash Ultra Lord. No. Uh, I am Ultra Yellowcaster Gar. Yeah, that's right. So, and this is episode 122. Oh my god, so we're back. Got lots of Ultraman to talk about. Got lots of news to talk about. Yeah. And a special something, because we're idiots. And didn't oh. realize, so we'll get into it when we get to it. Yeah, we'll get into it when we get there. But but it's a it's a doozy. It is a doozy. We fucked up. <laughs> it's it's one of those. Uh oh, we fucked up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Uh, first we got some news. Yeah, pretty exciting news actually. Yeah, and the first news story is what the. What? What the fuck? To me, Ultraman. So, this, Stop. this Stop. toy company named Bid Toys made a Mario and Bowser figure inspired by Ultraman and Godzilla. And good old Gojira. <laughs> like. Which they're called. Um, freaking Mario's is called um, Ma, Ma Ultraman. Manoltra. Yeah, Manoltra. And Kubala. Yeah, and Kubala. So, which I just, like, looked at the the Mario Ultraman and just went, Shwoohoo! Which, <laughs> which he has two color timers to, like, represent his, like, his overalls. Yeah, the... And button. then he has got, like, a little front on his thing to represent his hat. I don't know if... Does he have a Mario M? No, he doesn't have a Mario M. No. Nope. But that's the thing, and then we got Bowser's... Godzilla, and that looks terrifyingly awesome. I love it. I love it. This is like, I, I was never expecting a crossover like this. Yeah, you know, Ultraman Mario costume for Mario Odyssey. You know Gar would use that permanently. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that prefer just, you know, just using the regular outfit. Will they use the N64 one? When I'm at Peach's Castle. Okay. Yeah, just... I also like how they replaced Bowser's spikes with a... Uh, with, his, with his little tail thingy. Yeah, with Godzilla's uh, dorsal fins. Dorsal fins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. I don't know why this had to be a thing, but it, it's a thing. It, it, it's a thing. Oh, I get the red marking underneath Mario's... Uh, oh, it's the M? Yeah, it's the M. Gotcha. You can't see it because these are kind of like statues, so like they're stuck in one position. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, these will launch in August of 2020. They're part of a new Mario Uniqlo collection? Whatever that is. Oh, okay, it's like a fashion design. Well, yeah, because Levi's uh, has some Mario uh, like clothes out now. In which I saw that, and I'm like, there, there, there better be overalls. And it's like, yeah, there's overalls. I'm yeah, like, there's overalls. Freaking better be. I actually want to get a pair of overalls, because... Oh, sorry, these don't have a release date yet. 
<laughs> no. But I'm surprised these are actually official things. Yeah. Well, I mean, two of... Three of, like, Japan's biggest icons be coming together. Yeah. Yeah, Godzilla, Ultraman, and Super Mario. Mm-hmm. All like, right. That's like Mario Trinity right there. This is something I never realized I needed. Yeah. So, cool. Speaking of things that we never needed... Uh, apparently, Ultraman and Ghost in the Shell is doing a collaboration. I'm sorry, what? Uh, yeah, on April 12th, Netflix revealed a new key visual featuring two lead characters from Ghost in the Shell, SAC 2045, and the uh, 2019 Ultraman anime, as well as a teaser for both shows, which you can check below. Oh, that might just be the main character from Ghost in the Shell, like Scarlett Johansson's character. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Which I need to go see that, still watch that movie, because I heard that it was visually, like, impressive. My friend, uh, from, like, one of my, like, my anime friend from, uh, from the old movie theater, he loved, go- like, the original Ghost in the Shell. He went to go see that, and, like, I asked him, like, oh, how was he? He's like, it was fucking awful. And I'm like, well, at least I got a fan's opinion. <laughs> the theme song for Ghost in the Shell is pretty awesome, too. It's like a German song. Ooh. Uh, the visual was created to celebrate two properties sharing the same creative teams. Both 3D CGI anime series are directed by Kenji uh, Kamiyama and Shinji Ar- 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 Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, production IG and Sola Digital Arts. Aramaki. Oh, Aramaki. Shinji Aramaki. My apologies. Okay. My uh, Japanese is a little rusty at the moment. Though, according to my sister, when I do speak Japanese, I at least, like, can pronounce it right, according to my sister. Right. Okay. Or, or, or not pronounce it, but basically, like... You have, you have like, the dialect. Yeah, the dialect. Yeah, you, you, yeah, that's you have, it. You like, the accent for it. Yeah, like, I have the accent for it. Odegashimasu. Odegashimasu. Uh, okay. I wonder if just, it'd be weird if you just were like, Odegashimasu or Onigaizimasu. <laughs> Cool. I again something I didn't realize we needed. Yeah, but they do look cool, like standing together. They look like they're fused, like they're twins. Yeah. Now I just kind of want to see them just start like fighting, and then have it be like Black Hat and Spider Man, where she like she loves Ultraman, but she doesn't like Sh- uh, Shinji. I just want Ultraman to fight some Tachikoma. That'd be awesome. They're it's like these little like bouncing robot things that were in Ghost in the Shell. I'll have to look that up later. Yeah, Tachikoma. I'll definitely put it in the episode. All right. Uh, moving on to act- actors' news. So, uh, singer Daigo and actress uh, Ke- uh, Keiko uh, Ki- Kitagawa uh, have reportedly announced that they are expecting their first child. Yeah, so Daigo was the host of Ultraman Zero and Ultraman Saga. Yeah, and he was a part of Super Guts. And Keiko Kitagawa played... Uh, Sailor Mars in the Sailor Moon live action series. Wasn't she the girl in the Ryu Soldier Christmas episode? No, that was Sailor Venus. Oh, uh, yeah, so, sorry. All the all the Sailor Scouts kind of blend together. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah. remember when we talked about when they got married yeah. back in 2016. Uh, so I guess that must have been in extra extra cast ranger yeah probably because we weren't doing ultra ranger until the year 2017 oh we probably skimmed over like that's nice cool yeah that's nice bye okay fuck ultraman (laughs) oh i'll make my own show involving ultraman i always feel bad because like i shit on it too but it was more so just because i wanted to fit in with everyone else but like 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 i was it's like yeah fuck ultraman garb in my head but then i just come back out to you afterwards and i'd be like oh god don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yo, we st- we're still watching Orb on Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Sweet, sweet. No, no. And then just... Hold on. Oh. <laughs> we did the Rube handshake before the Rube handshake was a thing. No, we didn't. Mm, no. Go but watch Ultimate Orb. Legally available on Crunchyroll and Mill Creek. Yeah, you can... So you can watch it two ways. We own the Orb. Legally. Orb. We own the Orb movie on Blu-ray. We do own I the Orb. I found it at Walmart for twenty dollars. Which that's not bad for twenty for twenty bucks, but for thirty dollars you could have gotten the show and the movie. I know. 
but you know what? I've watched the show twice, so I remember a lot of it in my head. True. All righty. Uh, but speaking of things that we've already talked about, or at least actors that we've already talked about, uh, Yuto Ozawa, who played Lighto in Ultraman Gene. The best character in Gene. Yeah. Like, he, he's Ri- a- like Riku, Riku slash Gene is my favorite character in Ultraman Gene, but even I've acknowledged that Lighto is the best character in Gene, period. Yeah. Because he is a character that Tokusatsu hasn't really had in a while. Just... Average Joe. The average Joe who has the ability to transform. But yeah, uh, speaking of him, he's he showed up in a couple of episodes of Ultraman Chronicles Zero and G. Good for him. So it's nice to know that he he likes to come back. Yeah, I, I like because he's been in like the stage shows and showed up in other stuff. So like he loves the role. So I'm guessing, if anything, screw it. I call him the definitive host. Of, of Zero. Uh, you know what? Yeah, he's the best host of Zero. Like, because we got... What was his name? Ray? Or not Ray. It was... No, yeah, it was Ray. And then we had uh, Daigo, or whatever the fuck his name was. And, yeah. And Saga, uh, who, who was only able to make Zero, like, grow, like, a certain fucking height. Yeah. At one point, that was funny. Yeah, let me look, let me look up names quickly. Uh, but, yeah, um, I haven't really been watching... Uh, Zero and G simply because well number one it's just it, it's just a clip show featuring tiny bits of new information. Wait, Zero can go beyond without uh, Lito's help? Yeah, but don't tell Lito that. <laughs> He'll make him feel bad. Okay, his name was Rune. Oh. And then in Ultraman Saga, oh, I can't remember Daigo's actor's name. The uh, his name was. Okay, whatever. No. <laughs> His name was Tyga. Oh, okay. Oh, how everything comes full circle. Yeah. Anyway, it's good for Lito. Yeah. We, we miss you, buddy. Hope you show up in Jeed. Or, I mean, hope you show up in Zed. That'd be nice. Yeah. On to some, uh, speaking of Ultraman Z... Well, we got some uh, toy information involving Ultraman Z stuff. The V Riser. Yeah. So, uh, so up first we have the Ultra Z Riser, which it will come with the uh the. I'm trying to find names for this. Can't uh, find anything. So the item is used by Haruki to transform into Ultraman Z in his various forms. To so transform Haruki, inserts the Ultra Access card Haruki version in the Ultra Z Riser and moves the blade to transform to Ultraman Z. Uh, transformed to Ultraman Z Alpha Edge. After inserting the Ultra Axis card, Haruki inserts the Ultra 7, Ultraman Leo, and Ultraman Zero medals and moves the blade and then scans them in the medals. In addition, return the blade and scan the medals again to activate the finisher. You can transform to other forms by inserting other Ultra medals sold separately. That's cool. Yeah, so I will, uh, might get one for myself just because now that I know that Riku uses it, I need it. So, okay, so we at least know now that, like, to gain just his normal form, like, his normal, like, Z form, you just need to insert the card. Yeah. And to get the fusion forms, you use the metals. Yeah, so that's cool. And I like the whole scanning thing with, like, you have to, like, turn the entire blade around. Yes, I do like, I do like when, uh, when Toku toys have, like, multiple functionality. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... That's why, that's why I like the, like, as much as, like, the Gene Risers and, like, not my favorite henching toy, I still like that you have to, like, activate the capsule, put it in, take the thing, scan it, and then, and, mm-hmm. yeah. While the gyro, you just insert a thing, push, pull, pull it on it three times, and then that's yeah. it. And then you have the Tiger Spark where it just, pull, like, push down, like, pull the button back, scan the thing, and it'll make the noise. Yeah. At least here, it's like, you have to, like, slide open. Yeah, nothing big sticks to mess with. The thing that you don't have. Yeah. Or, you know, the thing where you just go, Gaia! <laughs> Which I'm sad. I, I tried rewatching my Gaia, the Gaia Yell compilation, but it got removed on Facebook, and I'm sad. Oh. I can't find it. But yeah, uh, the DX Ultra Z Riser will cost 6,050 yen, and it's coming out for a June 20th release. Yeah, so that'll be, like, $90, probably. 
Mm. But yeah, it's cool. It's going to come with that and the card and, and the medals. Yeah. So, which means they'll have like a G pack. Probably. I'll probably just get the G pack. Yeah, there'll probably just be a G pack on its own. So I'll get the G pack. But there will also probably be a case holder set, which involves the DX holder. Uh, which it looks like a purse. It does look like a fanny pack. Well, no, I didn't say it looks like a fanny pack. I said it looks like a purse. Oh. Uh, but yes, uh, so the case holder comes with three Ultramels itself. It comes with Ultraman, Ultraman Ace, and Ultraman Taro. So you can make a bait to smash. Yeah, you can get Red Man. The Red Man form, which what? someone actually made a picture of bait to smash. And Red Man. You know who that was, right? No. It was Matt Frank. Oh, was that Matt Frank who did yeah, that? Yeah, that was Matt Frank. That's amazing. Freaking Matt Frank has been losing his shit. Yeah, he's like... Because he, he's the guy that's in charge of the Red Man manga. He just did the Rick Dalton meme. Yeah, oh, yeah, the Rick Dalton meme. Rick Dalton meme where it's just like him sitting holding a beer and he's just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, pointing at the TV. Like, that's me! So yeah, uh, this item will be 2,640 yen and will be released on June 20th. You can... 20! Holds 20 medals. Yeah, it holds 20 medals. Damn! Now think, we only know about 12 of them. So what other medals are coming out? We better get a fucking Belial form. I swear to God. Uh, just, just give us, give us, give us the Zoltran Z equivalent of Thunderbreaster. Just have have an excuse to have Belial, Zoffy, and some. No, no, God, Belial, Zoffy, Titus. Just. Oh. That would be the ultimate swole fucking form. You know what they need to do? They need to remodel Zoffy and just make him like more built. Yeah. Because I'm thinking of it, I'm like, like Zoffy just looks like fucking Ultraman. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm looking at the Ultraman one, I'm like, how are you? Like, you can add the star medals, but no one's really gonna notice the difference. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a petition, remodel Zoffy to make him fucking more slow. No, oh, I like yeah. my Zoffy. Uh, but yeah, as I was just mentioning, the DX uh, Ultra Z Riser will also come in a pack. So there's gonna be a set involving the Z Riser and the holder, in which that's gonna be. 8,690 yen. Okay, so it'll be like probably like 110, 120 bucks? Yeah, 120 bucks. So it's it's better off just to get the case with the set form. Yeah, I might just get, I think I'll just get the regular, uh, like, Z Riser by itself. Yeah. Because I'm only interested in that and then the G set. Mm hmm. So. Which uh, we don't have any information involving that set, but we do have a DX Ultra Metal Ultraman Z Gamma Future set. Uh, so this will also be released on June or er, mid September. For and these sets alone will be eight hundred and twenty five yen, in which this set will include Ultraman Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia. Okay, so yeah, these will be like these will be like fifteen twenty minute twenty dollar like metal sets. It's just mad. Yeah, I just wonder how big they are. Like how big are they gonna be? Like, I'm gonna say uh, same size as like a O's metal. Maybe. They're not. They'll be. I think they'll be slightly smaller than a. Than a, a I have a feeling like a, they're gonna be slimmer. Like a rude crystal. It'll be. It'll be a, like just a bit smaller than a rude crystal. Like you know what? You, you said it itself. They look like poker chips. They'll be the size of a poker chip. Yeah, because I have a feeling they're probably gonna have like some sort of like indicator inside of them. I hope they're so, thick though. So that that way, when you scan it, it'd be like Tiga, Dino, Gaia. I just hope they're thick. Like no, but yeah, I mean, yeah, like, the, I know I what you mean. Like the metals are like, yeah, they're like they're thick. They're not just like thin, like like little paper. potato chips. Yeah, I don't want that. I am glad though that Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia are gonna be like one set on their own. <sighs> Come to together just for Dinah. No, don't do it. No, I know you like Dinah, but I don't like Dinah. I love Dinah. Well, I know you love Dinah, but don't do it that much. Maybe if there's a can't Remember how they make Gashapons of these things in the future, so just wait for a Dyna exclusive Gashapon. Yeah. Hopefully, I hope they do like a Cosmos, Hikari, and uh, who's another Blue Ultraman? Oh, Ghoul. Fuma. Yeah, yeah, fuck, fuck Fuma. <laughs> we know, we know, we know because of Tiger recently that they don't give a shit about Fuma. Yeah. He's the he's the black sheep of which, the Tri Squad. Which everyone's already pointed out. Okay. When are we going to get Rosso, Blue, and Asahi set? You know those three are going to be a set on their own. Well, they're a group. Yeah, set. the, mm. uh, the uh, Monado family set. Then we need an Orb, uh, Juggler I would. set. We haven't seen Kaijus yet, but I have a feeling they'll also be this. Because we don't have... 
any damn information involving any other cast member. Except for Takaya Aoyagi, who played Juggler, is joining the cast. He's the fucking captain of the organization. Yes, Captain Shota Hibu... Uh, Hebikura. Yeah, Hebikura. The My god! You sh- you sh- you fucking, like... Bull. You, you, you shat Rex when you saw this. Yeah. I, I just, you showed me and I was like, Huh, ah, cool. Good for him. Which, he, uh, a brief summary on the character is that he's a 30-year-old captain of the anti-monster world. 34-year-old. Oh, sorry, yeah. 34 year old captain of this anti monster robot force. He is friendly, cheerful, and reliable like a brother to this group of youths with personal issues. He is very active and strictly trains Haruki, aka Ultraman Z, from time to time. He's purely supported. He's not the only past Ultraman actor that will appear in the series, as is uh, Tatsumoi Hamada, who will prize his role as Riku. Uh, in the series, in the new series, he returns with a new form next to his own Ultra Z Riser. So, we know this is going to happen. Guys, this is my friend Riku. Nice to meet you, Riku. I'm Ca- I'm Captain Hibakura. Juggler? What are you doing here? No, I just hope he doesn't smile. He has, he's he's like, going to do the evil smile yes. once. No, no, no. He's going to look at the mirror, do the evil smile. He's going to be like, eh. Punch anyone you punch with a sword. There's going to... You know, some way, somehow, they're going to write in the fact that he yes, juggler. he was juggler. Or you see, like he have like his sword or something like in the background. No, I just want him to play off against juggler. So I want him to play off himself. What if he? Yeah. What if he is juggler? Yeah. Someone, someone posted like a picture of like uh, on Twitter where it was like Ultraman Z twenty twenty, and then it just showed like a uh, 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 juggler from the, from the orb movie talking to the guy. He's just like. It's like, I've been doing well for myself. I'm gainfully employed now. <laughs> oh, yeah, when he became the butler. Yeah. But no, honestly, good for him. Like, this is a surprise. He's, he's a good actor. He was, like, probably one of the best things in Orb period. So, like, it's I, for him to take on a role like this. Like, I remember... I still wish it happened, but I remember when... Before Q-Rangers cast came out, it was rumored that he was going to be the Red Ranger. Uh, hmm. was, I was totally sold on. I'm like, I'm done. I'm sold. And it's like, oh no, it's not happening. We got him. That's really lucky. Yeah, lucky. Hey, don't kiss my boy lucky. But yeah. Just, I know. Alrighty. He's got slick hair too. And our last news story. Uh, speaking of guy, uh, Ultraman Orb actors, uh, Hido Ishiguro, who portrayed a guy... A.K.A. Ultraman Orb. And Kai in Ultraman and Comrade Regeneron. See if anyone remembers that. I don't think anyone who's watched Deno remembers the ending to Deno. I do. Well, I do too, but I just have a feeling a lot of people didn't make it to the ending. I just remember Kai was an asshole and he stole uh, Ryotaros' <laughs> fucking dance group and he was really mad at him for it. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill this guy because he took my dance group. He just stole my groove. <laughs> Go ahead, ask me any question. All right. Uh, what do you think of the finale of Old of Kamen Rider Deno? Which one? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got a YouTube channel. Good for him. Yeah, which I subscribed, and it's nothing but live streams. Yeah. And, and you know, not, like face mask because of, the, the, of the, the thing. The invasion. The invasion. And since he is new on YouTube, he has troubles how the YouTube process goes. So he asked for some help from his fans, and when he uploaded his video, yeah, how, how do you, how do I YouTube? Yeah, no, some people don't know how to use YouTube. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I know how to use YouTube, but, but I don't upload the episodes of Ultra Ranger. Yeah. And there's another thing I want to talk about, but I am actually under NDA to not say anything. It's that big of a thing. I cannot say it. Well, I can't. Beep. Yeah, I know. Pretty pretty exciting stuff. See, this is why you didn't. Beep. I know. It's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Uh, so, we're going to be doing a few things differently now that the news is done. So, we're going to be talking about Tag first. 
Yeah. Yeah. So episode twenty one, Earth in Friend. You got an Earth and Friend. So, so, <laughs> so this is about like discrimination and jumping to conclusions and racism and all that shit. All right, what's this episode of Tiger about? <laughs> so it starts with this young man named Tasaki Osamu. Yeah, o- and, Osamu. Yeah, Osamu. Uh, t- Tasaki is his last name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I know it is. I was just saying it mm-hmm. the Japanese way. They always say the last name first, then the, then the first name. All right, fine. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so it's him <laughs> trying to defend his mom uh, because Zeton was attacking, which means that this was happening during the Zeton attack from the previous episode. Yeah, an episode, I think, what was it? I think it was 19 or 20. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I think it was 19. No, it was... Um... Yeah, it was 19 because they brought Zeton. Yeah. With the two guys. Yeah, so it, was, it happened during the attack of Zeton, which uh, Kirisaki saves him and his mom. And, like, you see her later, like, in the hospital bed, and tears up. It's just like, it's okay. We're not gonna find these aliens who did this to you. We're gonna beat them up. And I'm like, I'm just looking at Kurosaki. I'm like, you're full of shit. You do. You are up to something. We see through your bullshit. You can't trick us. So he sends uh, Osamu to uh, Aegis. Aegis. And he's gonna be. He gets recruited as a new member. Oh, that was fast. Yeah. Mm. Though it feels like like a few days have gone by, but it's just like an hour. Yeah. And so like he doesn't get fully on as a member, but like uh, Khan oh. is just like, oh, we'll put you in a trial. You can go patrol yeah. karaoke. And yeah, we'll show you around. Here's yeah. a jacket. Freak is like, yeah, fucking go with the scowl. That's Mari. And this dolt is fucking karaoke. There you call me a just doll. like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> no, she didn't even say that. Um, She's a pretty lady. So, yeah. And they do the dumbass thing where they show him the... This is our most valuable item. Yeah, the... the Don't the, touch the, it. The GQ or... Um, the QT? I forgot what it was called. I, fa- I think it was called the GQ. I call it the... the like Kurosaki called it the alien detection device. Yeah, the, the alien, yeah. So the, it's it's the thing that the chick made. Um, the last up, the sandcastle episode. You know the thing that so, fucking Kana said in the previous episode, going, "Yeah, no, this thing's gonna be really bad if we keep using this." Yeah, so we're gonna hang on to it. Wait. So he steals it along with the electric baton, and he goes off with Kurosaki, and it's like, "All right, we're gonna go look for the alien that summoned the Zeton and fuck." Fuck your mom up. And <laughs> or fuck the alien. So or they scan for an alien. alien, which they find, and it's an alien ghost. You, you know, from episode four of Kaiju Club? Yes. In the finale of Ultra 7? Sure. It's a long time ago, guys. <laughs> we haven't gotten Ultra 7 yet. No, it's... it's not, now, now, we're, now I'm spoiled for Ultra 7, so thank you. It, it, it's not in my hands. But it should be. I know. You'll get it eventually. Better um, come in the next like, Amazon's four weeks. being really fucking stupid. Well, not, no, they're not being stupid. They're actually being really fucking smart because they're uh, prioritizing like important shit over stupid shit people are buying. Well, I so. bought it in the Toronto Amazon warehouse. It should have been here by day one. Yeah. Yeah, they'll get to it. I could have drove there myself and got it faster. Yeah, so Osamu with no fucking, like, just Idea. no 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 common sense. He, he just, Kurosaki has, like, warped this fucking kid's mind into thinking that, like, all aliens are bad. You need to fucking kill all of them. And so, like, Kurosaki goes to, like, try to attack the alien, and you can clearly tell that he's, like, whispering something to him. And then he pushes him, and he's like, Ah! He pushed me! Go get him, Osamu! Ah! God! <laughs> we just let me know! Oh! 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 God! Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh. He, he pushed me off my ankle! Go, go get him! Go kill him! <laughs> like, that was it, pretty much. He's being a little shitbag. I question you sometimes, Candace. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> you're gonna fucking Ashley Tisdale I mean is, is that not a good thing no, no. 
Like no, no, I'm comparing Kurosaki to, like, your whole Kurosaki bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this yeah. Anyways, uh, Osamu's a racist. Well, yeah, we, we, I just explained that. He's an alienist. Yes. So, well, it's because, again, Kurosaki just, like, warped his mind and made him, like, just think, like, aliens are bad. So he, like, finds him, like, fucking tackles him on the ground, sh- hits him with the electric baton, like, beats the shit out of him, and he's just like, yelling at him. Omari like, finds him. And, yeah, which then, uh, Omari gets fucking shoved into a tree. and Knocked out. Well, not, knocked out, but then uh, the, uh, the alien starts using Omari as, like, a voice, because, like, so it's like, why do you speak fucking English? Japanese, speak fucking Japanese! <laughs> So, yeah, and, like, he, he sounds like a fucking Animal Crossing character. <laughs> yeah. Go play Animal Crossing out now. I, I would if I had the money. You should. <laughs> um, bitch. Um, so, yeah, so Mario starts talking, like, he t- takes it over his body to, like, use as, like, a vessel to, like, talk. And he's just, like... He's just like, I'm just here to do alien stuff, and I didn't attack your fucking mom. What invasion? I was. What's a Zeton? Yeah, I don't have a Zeton. I have Pandon, and he summons Pandon, and his fucking stupid, <laughs> stupid two heads stuck together, which looks dumb. Aww. No, I like I like the old. I like the better Pandon. Oh, you like the uh, modernized design yeah, of modernized, them? Modernized. Where, where it's like two separate heads yes. connected to the butt. Yeah. Uh, or two heads with two separate necks connected to the body. Yes, instead of the fucking stupid pandon, which it's just the two heads like... Like the original design of pandon. Yes, I don't like that at all. According to the Ultra Wiki, which I don't know how much I should rely on that. Uh, well, it's because sometimes there's just false inter- information on mm-hmm. there. But uh, according to the modernized design, it's known as King Pandon. Oh, okay. I, I guess he's king because he's got two necks. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, the, the rest of this episode was, like, kind of, like, it went by quickly for me. Tiger, uh, basically, Kurosaki bumps into Hiroyuki, telling him, it's like, oh, you're just one part of the puzzle, uh, to my mass, uh, to my ultimate plan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then, uh, he turns into Taiga, and then Osamu's... Uh, the alien ghost tells Osamu, it's like, he's not here to attack. He's just protecting me. He's my son. I'm his parent. Well, he sees me as, as his parent. Yeah, in which we got a quick flashback of him, of the alien ghost holding, like, a vinyl figure of Pat. I was like, oh, yeah, and he's, cool. like, you can tell he's moving it in, like, the palm of his hand. Yeah, like, you know. make it look like it's moving. Yeah. It's like, oh, so, like, you know, Taiga doesn't kill Padon. So Trigger comes in, bees a dick, and basically murders the damn thing. Oh my god. Brutally. And the Tiger's like, you beat the shit! So he goes to Tristerium, and he, like, even Trigger kind of like makes a comment just being like, ooh, yes. we're fighting you, huh? Yes, fight me with that rage. Yeah, and... Oh, put your dick in me. What? That, what? No. No, I didn't say that. Well, I mean, Trigger's possibly gay, so... He could... But she might not. You might not have the hot spur for ultras or for Taro. You might have the hot spur for Hikari. No, he worked with Hikari. Yeah, but you got the, a the... close. Hikari's like, whoa, whoa, I got an ultra wife, all right. <laughs> I got an ultra wife. I got an all ultra right. girlfriend. You know, you know what? That's the title of the episode. Okay. I got an this ultra is wife. Not gonna look. At, this is not gonna relate at all to the fucking wacky thumbnail that I've thought of. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and so I got yeah, an ultra wife for it. So in the end, like the ghost alien makes a fucking uh, little graveyard memorial thingy for for Pat on. He's like, oh, I missed him. Well, mm. I'm gonna go now. Bye. Oh wait, where's my missile? Yeah, so Kurosaki found the alien ghost just to use its missile to drill into the center of the earth because he's looking for f- four elements, which then he told reveals that there is a fifth element that he's looking for, which is called the ether. And Which, according to Titus, that's the soul of, like, it's kind of like the soul of the Earth. Yeah, so it literally... It, it awakens the, the Earth. Yeah, so he shot a missile into the fucking cool plant, so that's not good. Well, it didn't do that, like, it didn't do that much damage. It basically just caused, like, a sudden earthquake. Mm-hmm. 
However, there's a bigger threat now coming towards Earth. Yeah, and there's a countdown for and, it, too. Yeah, at the end of the episode, there's a countdown for it. For, like, 665, like, thousand seconds or I, something. I want to say minutes or hours. Uh, not hours. <laughs> it's definitely, like, minutes. Like, or seconds. It's def- I want to say minutes. Like, within, like, the next few days, it'll show. Who knows? I, I'm not good with timing things. No, we're not good with that. I mean, hell, look at the release schedule of Volts Ranger. Oof. Does it look like I have any concept of time? Right? Yeah, last week you were just like, what day is it? I'm like, oh, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday? <laughs> oh, I'm going to work on that video Thursday. Guard us tomorrow. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a good episode. Yeah, it was alright. It t- like, again, Tiger Tiger's just good on teaching like morals and lessons to children. Just don't don't fucking judge a book by its cover and don't just because one alien was bad, don't assume all of them are bad. So fuck you. <laughs> now I'm just thinking of the meme from a uh, or some, the the collab that someone did of in, of Infinity War fans. I'm tired of you people. He rips off Iron Man's mask, and it's uh, Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, let's play the next bumper. It's not that we fucked up bad. Not bad, but we're we're idiots. <laughs> All so right. Gar, you know, you know, you know, you said, oh boy, we we miss Gridman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we miss Gridman. Yeah. So it turns out, while I was editing one of the older episodes, I realized, oh shit, we skipped an episode of Gridman. We did. We went from twenty-seven to twenty-nine. Yeah, and, like none of us noticed because we. Because it was like weeks after we finished recording for the year. And it was just off from our head. Okay, there are two reasons for it. One, Lane's to blame. Yeah. Because he wanted to rush through the episode so that he could watch. Uh, episode 8. Uh, episode Star 8. Wars, Star Wars. Wars. Time for episode 9. Yeah, because we were watching episode 9 uh, that night. And it's my fault because I never, edit, I never changed that from the schedule so for the longest time on our editing bay it was just episode 27 and 28 so to fix that mistake we're going back we're talking about episode 28 of Denko Chojin Gridman and what the fuck Yuka vanished did I just watch oh I honestly like I was saying when we were like the rest of this whole week when we were talking about like how oh we're gonna talk about this episode of Gridman we missed I was like watch it be like the best episode of Gridman ever and it was like and honestly it was the best it was one of the best episodes of Gridman ever I, I just every five minutes I was just like what? Well, one of the most important things was because in a later episode of Gridman that we watched, we just see God Xenon show up, and we were just like, me and Gar were like, oh, God Xenon came back? It's like, all right, well, that wasn't explained. Yeah, this episode explained God Xenon coming back. Yeah, apparently they recoded him back into They recoded gym. him, they gave him like a power up program so they can make him stronger. That way he doesn't freaking die again. In like one shot, yeah, so. But uh, this episode's weird because it's about Takashi and stalking Yuka, like, a lot with the video camera. Like, and he wants to kidnap her and make her his forever. Whole nother level. Yeah, so he's, like, of watching creepiness. Her, yeah, like, he's watching her on, like, her bike, like, filming her with, like, a video camera. And he's, like, he's, like, watching her, like, when, like... She's at like a baseball like uh, field, and he's, he's like, he's like, oh yes, just turn around, smile, smile, like a smile at me, and so she turns around and smile and smiles. She's like, oh my god, he's smiling at me, oh my god. He looks over. Oh, it's Naoto. He was walking to me and smiling at me. Oh yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, and 
he fought. I liked him. Why, why should I care about some guy that likes you? Oh, is this a point? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so. Five bucks to anyone who gets that. Yeah, I don't get that. Um, so, I don't. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Well, what's the problem? Well, I'm not going to say it because then someone will get the five bucks. Okay. No, they won't. Avenue Q. Oh, no, I've never seen all that. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I've, only, I've only seen everyone. Everybody's racist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, so Takashi's whole plan is to take a, make a kaiju, which she does. We got the peeping monster Igar. What? Yeah, and he's this cool, like, cybernetic, like, turtle, like, four legged kaiju. Adictatus. <laughs> Adictatus. <laughs> God, that was a video. Um, also, Gar finally watched the, uh, the the Sonic Kid. The one who's like, you freaking bricks! Oh, yeah. Why will you learn? As your actions have consequences! That kid needs to take a freaking chill pill. And I, wa- I would love to look up what he's doing now. Like He's not that... like that, that video was only made like a few years ago. Yeah. So he's only like three, four years older. And he was just complaining about like fucking Sonic because Sonic 06 was absolute garbage. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, so Takashi, he decides to make a kaiju, which he puts into his video camera, and his video camera has the ability to, like, snapshot, like, a person in a location, and then he, like, teleports that person into his camera, and then he can have it be whatever he wants. So, he stalks Ta- Yuka on her way home, like, because she's not feeling well, and she's like, oh, I'm cold, oh, like... So while the, like they were the while like the three of them are like in the uh, junk, they're like repairing Godzilla. So like you just like oh I'm really really tired, which then Ipe, being the horny little fucking perverted bastard that he is, just turns around. And it's like oh well like do you do what do you sleep naked or something? Where did that come from? Ipe Ipe's fucking horny for Yuka like, so, and then later on she's like. Oh, I'm like a little bit scared and like thank you guys for like dropping me off home and he's like ah oh, give me a kiss on the cheek and, that, and she's like god no bye now and like, you see that yeah you see that over there yeah yeah that's called left field where the hell is all this coming from no, dude it's been fucking all series of Bridman is that <laughs> Ipe has these this hard on for fucking Yuka oh I'm upset Yuka love but like, me but like Yuka now but see, Naoto <laughs> likes Yuka too. Like, everyone likes Yuka. Of course. It's because she's the only fucking girl on the show. And then it's like, oh, how could this possibly get any weirder? It gets weirder. Yeah, so they drop her off at home, and she goes in, and she's, she's in her room. She starts to change into her PJs. And, like, so we see, like, Takashi's, like, on her fucking, on her on balcony. balcony of her fucking room, looking into her window, and, like, he's just, like, filming her, like, taking her shirt off, and, like, putting on her PJ pants, and I'm just, like, sitting there, like, oh, no, because that's, that's voyeurism, people, and that, that, that is a common thing in Japan, like, people spy on, like, fucking women, like, doing shit in their bedrooms like that's just like a thing look it, it up i, I wish i don't had. look it up well uh, i mean look it up but don't, don't look we here at hygiene sentai ultra you do not support voyeurism don't do it that's invasion of people's privacy it's not cool i don't really know what that actually means voyeurism it means spying on someone when they're not aware of it okay that's just fucking disturbing yeah there's lots of porn for that so. Ugh. Uh, well, no, don't do it. I, I kind of wish I had like a like a dashboard here, like <laughs> uh, uh, like a uh, sound clips, yeah. so I can just click the buttons. Just, uh. c- like yeah, that and like when he was doing that, first thing that popped into my head was this: he's a peeping tom. Peepin yeah, he was even he was even like dressed in like like the flasher like overcoat with the hat, and he had the face mask over. And but then like, like earlier years... before, before, before he gets on the balcony, he like gets attacked by a dog. And then he falls over, over and he, get, he gets his hand like uh, covered in shit. Covered in shit. He's like, ah, ah, and he ah. starts wiping it on like the concrete. Yeah, which that that doesn't do anything. That makes it worse. Yeah, it um, just smears yeah. But it. so he like takes a snapshot of Yuko while she's changing, and then like she goes missing. She go. She ki- gets kidnapped and sucked into the camera, which then Takashi edits a video of her in this like skimpy outfit. Sitting with Takashi, 
in a tuxedo in this lit up fucking bedroom and she's just like oh Takashi I want to be with you forever and Takashi's like I know baby and, I love you too yeah and like they're about to kiss and Takashi's like oh and Kanji Ta- fires just like what are you doing? Takashi is that kid in high school who thinks he's in a relationship after the person has told him no several times to the point where they don't feel sorry for him. No, th- th- this has been used in like other movies and shows where it's like the guy who's just like overly obsessed with this one girl. It's like, uh, it's like Biff. Yeah, but it, like in Back to the Future too, like Biff like stalks uh, Lorraine and it's like you're gonna be my Lorraine, you're gonna be my wife, and like yeah, so like Biff had a lot of stress. Don't do if you like a girl, don't fucking obsess over her because it's creepy. It's she's not gonna like you because of that. But like, like yeah, it's generic to just you know say be yourself and tell them how you really feel. But don't be but, a weirdo. But about like that. yeah, don't be a weirdo about it. Don't go all out. Just. Just tell them. Just be friends. Start as friends, get to know the person, and then if they don't like you, too bad. It's not meant to be. Yeah, at least you got an awesome friend, though. Exactly. Don't be me with my first crush. Oh, uh, we don't want to know about that story. No, I know. That's not a good episode. Um, That's an episode that needs to get scrapped. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so... Yeah, she goes missing, and which... And which she, they, like, talk, she leaves, like, a horribly edited video of her in her skimpy outfit going, like, I'm not here right now. I left to go with my love, Takashi. Bye. It, it looks even bad because, like, like the lips are just yeah, like, the lips aren't syncing up with uh, with the dialogue. It's just like the repetitive footage of her saying something and just like dumped her over. Yeah, but uh, she didn't say Takashi. It was just like, oh, I'm leaving forever for don't, a guy. Yeah, for a guy. Don't come looking for me. Bye. Yeah, and now Tony and Ife are like, no, something's up. We'll just, go. Edit this or we'll break down this video, see what's really happening. Yeah, and then so Kondiji Fire goes to talk. She's like, "Oh, this is a cool, a weird plan you have, but you should expose it more. Do do more destruction." Yeah. So Takashi goes out into the city and like he sees like a guy running for mayor. He's like, "Vote oh, Kan Kanata and stuff like that." And then like he <laughs> takes a photo of him and then he just he warps him into the camera and like he's like, "What the fuck?" And then there's a guy like. Fucking being annoyed, horn. Yeah, because uh, Takashi's not paying attention and almost gets run over. Yeah, and then and taxi driver's like, "Yo, what you doing?" Beep, 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 beep. And and Takashi's like, "Well, fuck you!" Bam, snaps the picture. And like as he's walking away, he's like, "Don't get in my way." Don't get in my way, bitch. Yeah, and like the guy in the back of the taxi, he's like, <laughs> he's like, "Mamma mia, mamma mia." Um, so Takashi's about to kill or about to take. A subway guy. Yeah. Who's like drive who's driving a subway cart. Yeah, but we're thankfully, like thankfully he, he battery he, died. Battery died. So or, like, or the battery's dying. It's like, don't fucking do that. Uh so he goes to a video store and starts charging and like Yuka's like, What the fuck are you? What are you doing? And Takashi's like, Don't worry, baby, you're mine forever and she's like, Ew <laughs> Like she doesn't know it's Takashi, she just hears the voice. Yeah probably hears like a muffled voice or something yeah uh so then you pay no to they go back to the junk and Gridman's like oh i found where she is she's in this camera and yeah like, because be, since takashi plugged the camera into a charger that's connected to the the grid the grid Gridman finds it and he's like oh they're being uh they're being captured like or or no they drive by uh or they ride by the uh the guy in the taxi and it's like the guy vanished he spirited away like the movie? The movie wasn't even out yet. The movie didn't come out. Like 2001. Was 2001. When this, the series is for 93. And 94 at this point. No, 93. Oh, still 93, yeah. yeah 90, October of 1993. Just. He's just going to be like, what's this? There's. There's making a joke. But then there's making out of context jokes. Like, you can take liberties with some things, fan subbers. Well, I thought these were official subs. Freaking, you ask Subraya and they'll probably be like, who the fuck are they? Yeah. And just, 
Just oh. Yeah. So he fight. So like Gridman, Gridman uh, start, uh, shows up and starts fighting the uh, Igar, and <laughs> Igar. Igar. Um, and he starts fighting, him, and like at one point, it looked like it looked like freaking Gridman like swung off of something and like jumped on him. <laughs> So, like, uh, he's getting his ass kicked again, like he does. And so they summon God Xenon to come in, which he pays off raiding him. And God Xenon's actually, like, better. He's helping God him out. Punches him. And, like, at one point, like, Gridman fucking, like, is, like, lifting up Igar. And then, uh, like, God Xenon, like, punches him. And then he, like, finishes off, uh, finishes off Igar with the Grid Slash attack, which, that was new. Good old Slash. Yeah, and then he uses the, and, like, Yuka, I guess, is, like, watching him through, like, her room or something. And she's like, oh, baby, I need something. Ah. Every time you make that voice, all I'm just thinking is, make it man, make it man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, um. And so yeah, everyone gets put back where they where they belong, and like the 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 passenger like hugs the text. They're like, "Yay, you're back!" He's like, "What the fuck?" And, what the fuck? Yeah, and so it, it was funny. Like when Gridman like jumped into the camera, like talked. She was about to grab it because it was fully charged, but he got like shocked and he got knocked out because of it. Oh no. <laughs> My videos, yeah. Yeah, and so he's upset that the 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 Yuka's gone out of her camera, out of his camera. <laughs> and then we just see like a Gridman icon show up where the footage was, and he's just like, ha ha, ba boom, and like showcases his victory. Yay! So that was funny. Um, so yeah, now we finished all of Denko Choji Gridman. This was a really good episode. So this is how it feels to finish a show. And then go back and watch a random episode of it. Yep. It was a good time. And just, this just shows just how much this show it's great. is great. It's so great. Go watch Gridman, everyone. Go watch Gridman, then go watch SSSS with Gridman. And then go watch SSS Dyna Xenon. Yeah, when that comes out, because you know it's going to be a fucking Grid Knight show. Yeah. All about Grid Knight with Dyna Dragon. Because when I was editing the recent, uh, the episode that came out today, uh, episode 109, that's when we were talking about SSSS, Dyna Xenon. And we, we had an argument where it was like, it's a se- you're like, it's a sequel. I'm like, no, it's a spinoff. It's a sequel spinoff. It's a sequel spinoff, reboot, remaster, it's remake. It's going to anti and Grid Knight and he's going to fucking fuse with Dyna Dragon right on Dyna Dragon. It seems fucking awesome. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we'll get God Xenon back. Who knows? Maybe. But first... Stiga time. Stiga! So, episode 48, Fugitive from the Moon. So, this is about, like, some alien shenanigans and, like, misinterpretation and brainwashing and kidnapping and hoary scary fist and, oh my god yeah <laughs> the, the best part of this entire episode was probably like like there's this one scene where like they get some shock news about something and it cuts to like every person's face and then we just get cut to hoary's face and he's just like horrified <laughs> I'm gonna make the joke there. He was horrified. Which I think that should be the name of the fucking episode. Uh, that sounds like a better name of the episode. He yeah. was horrified. Yeah. Horrified. Right. Horrified. There we are. There we go. Horrified. He was horrified. So that's our thumbnail. Our thumbnail is going to be the shot uh, of Gridman where Ipe was like, you sleep naked? And <laughs> and then if the I think the computer screen's in view. Yeah. And we're just going to have Hori's face just on the computer screen. So I think that's going to be fucking fantastic when that's made. Which, like, when Gar finishes editing a thumbnail, he always shows me it. So I'm going to just be hanging out in my room or something someday. He's going to show me that thumbnail. I'm going to fucking lose my shit. It's going to be so funny. <laughs> So thank you, thank you, future Gar, for giving me a laugh later. Um. Uh, yes. So we th- this week the country of the episode was the alien Minjura, and there were a bunch of them, and they wrapped up people in fucking cocoons and and transformed into them and acted like complete total assholes. <laughs> and they laughed a lot. Like 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 you thought Bolton laughed. <laughs> yes, Gar. <laughs> These guys laugh a lot. Yes. They sound, they sound, yeah, they sound like fucking salacious crumb from Return of the Jedi. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Quakey monkey lizard. Weird ass fucking creatures. Uh. Yep. Um. But yeah. So like, there's face on the moon, and they got attacked by a bunch of fucking alien uh, Manjuras who were disguised as TPC members, and this one guy named Hayata, or sorry, Hayate. Though you're not wrong. Which? Apparently he is based on Hayata. Okay, and we tried to look up this guy's actor, we could not find shit about him. Uh, the only thing that I could find about him was he was the Japanese dub voice of the main character in Ultraman Great. Yes. That, 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 that's pretty much it. That's all I could find. That's it. Um, and, yeah, so he's, like, escaping and, like, trying to escape and, like, the Minjura are, like, following him in Guts' wings or whatever and they, like, attack him. They, the moon base explodes. Yeah, they, they kidnap him and they put him in a cocoon and then, like, one guy who's a, who's the, uh, Kishinaga, who's the survivor, uh... You got big air quotes for survivor. He he gets found and interviewed by by guts, and it's like, oh, you gotta go to the moon base and you'll find the find your dude and like he, he'll have all your answers for you and, like, and they're like, guts well, how is like, we okay, know? And then, didn't blow it up. Yeah, and so like the general the general and like head of TPC or whatever like that just like, no, you're off the case. You you can't find this guy. Guts is off the case, but you're, why? Because. Iruma, you, you, you have history with this. Yeah, one you guy. have history with this guy. You're gonna let your your personal feelings with them get in the way of the mission. Which Frick, Frick, that's what they probably should have done in Captain America: Civil War. I gotta go stop him. Sorry, Cap. Due to your personal history of Bucky, it's better off if we if we tackle this and then you let him, and then you negotiate with him once we capture him. Man, that actually sounds pretty reasonable. Okay. Dun-dun. Yeah. Right. Civil so War's fucking over. <laughs> so there was no Civil War. There was no Civil War. There you go. Um, but obviously the the head officers they're fucking taken over, and then they Aroma finds out, and, and they're like, "Aroma, you're you're, you're, you're demoted." Anymore. Yeah, and like it's like Kishinaga's gonna take over as captain, and Munkaz is like, "The fuck!" <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, like at first we were, we were like, "Oh, what are you talking about?" Like, sh- like she's our captain, but I was expecting Munkaz to be like. I should be in charge. No, even he fucking respects her so much that, like, she, he was pissed off about that. Uh, and that's when, like, and so then later on, like, Aruma gets captured, he gets turned into a Minjura or whatever, and, like, she comes back, it's like, oh, yeah, it's Kishinaga's our captain now. Hmm. She starts smiling all evil. Like, and that's when they and do, like, the shock faces. And that's when the hoary face, the horrified face happens. It's so funny. Also, he's wearing a wedding ring! Yeah, he is wearing a he is wearing a wedding ring, a wedding band. So he, yeah. he got he actually got married like, yeah. after that episode. The fuck. Yeah. Who? But like the face he made looked like like he had like some crazy like role play <laughs> sex with Michiru, and like he just like realized oh fuck I forgot to uncover from the bed this morning <laughs> while she was asleep. It, it, it's that face of like oh, you were, like like oh fuck I forgot something. Yeah, like oh fuck. Oh so much. I didn't toss out the eggs. Oh, fuck. I left the clothes in the washing machine. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Ultra Ranger's not out yet. There you go, and Gar, Gar realizes he hasn't edited all month. <laughs> not no, me when I realize what day it is during the quarantine. <laughs> um, yeah, so then they're like, uh, they find they go into space because like they're like oh, fuck orders. We're just gonna go anyway, and so Daigo ends up finding uh, Hay- Hayate, and he's like he's like yeah oh, the aliens take fucking over, and it's like all right, so they go fly back. Um, Which Daigo gets his lights knocked out when uh by the uh, higher ups doppelgangers. Yeah. Which so what does Daigo do? Oh, I'm gonna turn to Tiga. In, in the building. Whatever. And where there's to... security cameras everywhere. Oh no, the light blinded so you can see it. There's four fucking episodes left. They probably know who he is now. Yeah. Um, and so... They, like, you see Tiga, like, chasing down, like, the, the ship with the, with the Manjuros in it. And they're just looking over, like, ah, fucking hell. And so, Ooh, like, he sh- shoots them down. They, they, they crash. And then they turn into two of them. So, it had actually distinct differences. Like, one had one little weird arm thingy on his chest, and another one had, like, two arm thingies on his chest. 
And they were like, eh, just like shooting fire and stuff like that. And like Tiga starts like trying to fight them. Uh, they kill, and he pretty much ends up killing both of them because uh, Hayate does like an attack with them where he fires a laser, and then uh, uh, Tiga uses his Zeppelion ray. Yeah, Zeppelion ray, which it. Uh, so I was like fucking right through both of them and dissolving both of them. It's fucking, it 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 fucking awesome. Man, Tiga flies off. Yeah, and then Ruma and all of them were rescued, which, like, it showed them, like, ripping them out of the co- co- cocoons, but it was only from, like, the neck up, so obviously they only had, like, these, like, head, these, like, cotton head pieces, and yeah. they just ripped it off, and they were like, <gasps> yeah, and <laughs> Just the one guy's so- just sleeping. Yeah, and everything was okay. And then they went back into space to go rebuild the moon base. <laughs> yeah, and Hayate, like, left a message for Ruma, just going, like, come visit the moon sometime if you have time. Call me. Yeah, I need a quickie. So, uh, here's the cat's that's my new, That's my newest favorite, like, just like. Thing to say on Ultra Ranger? No, just just thing in general. Just like, you need a little, like, blowjob. One quickie. Just what the. <laughs> Lane, the show. I don't need a quickie. I'm just saying I like when people say, like, oh, I need a quickie. Lane, the show's PG. Uh, no, it's not. Yes, it this is. is rated fucking 14. <laughs> You're, if you're not, this is, this is age restricted content. If you're not, if you're 14 years old or lower, you shouldn't be listening to this. You probably don't even know what we're talking about. No. I realized today, no one can really come into Ultra Ranger. Professionals are going to listen to these episodes and be like, what the fuck are they talking about? Oh, like, when, like, like they're probably going to listen to this and be like, these guys know what's up. See, they know. They know what the true yeah, they essence know. of Ultraman is. <laughs> they know what the true re- they know what the true message of Ultraman is. I gotta give them a quickie. What? Quick call. <laughs> uh, anyway, what? so now let's get on to the interesting episode. Yeah, of Tiga, episode forty nine, the Ultra Star. Now, Gar informed me way ahead of time in advance, like weeks ago, months ago, that like. Oh, Lane, you're going to love episode 49. That's where Tiga crosses over with Ultraman. I was like, all right. Can't wait for like a regular, normal t- ass Tiga plot. And somehow Ultraman gets fucking shoved in there. And like, this is not what I was expecting to fucking watch. Even you were fucking, you were speechless. I, I was like, what the- come again? So, it begins with this guy named fucking Charjo, which it's this fucking Charlie Chaplin looking motherfucker. Like, it's this, it, like, it was, it was if Charlie Chaplin and Odd Job from Goldfinger just, like, fucked and had a baby. Because he was wearing, like, white makeup, he had, like, the, the walk thing on, like yeah, yeah, Charlie he, Chaplin did, and he had, like, the, the, the bowler hat, like, fucking Odd Job does. This fat fucking Japanese guy. And he's just going around, and he's just looking for kaijus, as, you know, normal people fucking do. And he asks, like, the children, oh, yeah. oh, I'll trade you these flowers for that monster, a kaiju. And she, they're like, no. Uh-oh. And then one of the girls just says, well, if you want monsters, you gotta go to Super Riot Productions. And we're just, we paused, and we're like, what? We thought that was, like, a mistranslated thing. But no, we we heard the, her say, Subaraya. And we also noticed one of the kids that he was talking to had a Tiga, Tiga finger. Oh, the Tiga vinyl, yeah. yeah. So, I, I'm really curious. Is there ever an episode of Ultraman, at least in the Heisei era, where they acknowledge that someone is making Ultraman merchandise and he's not getting any of the pay? Of course he's not getting any fucking royalty payments or revenue from it. It's just this image. Yeah, at least Spider-Man's... At least Spider-Man did that. Plus, they wouldn't know who to fucking give the money to. Exactly. Because, you know, Ultraman's a fucking secret identity. Yeah, exactly. And that's what happened in Spider-Man as well. It's like, like Spider-Man went to the toy company and be like, hey, I want some money for this. And he's like, no. Like, All right, take off your mask. Show us who you are. We'll give you the money. No, no, not even that. It's like, well, we, we got a direct de- deposit somewhere. And do you have a... You know what? Just do what Bruce Wayne does. Fake accounts. Fake names. You know how rich Peter could be? Well, no, Bruce Wayne doesn't use, like, fake accounts. He just, like, he just, he buys all his tech through, like, another, like, system and, like, ports that money to somewhere else, like, secret projects, and no one knows who the fuck it is because Lucius Fox keeps it under wraps. But anyways, 
So, what does this guy do? Goes to Subaraya. Daigo starts following him, and he goes into Subaraya Productions, which, oh, man, it looked like a wacky, fun fucking place. All right, it was you're... all CGI'd and shit. All right, you're talking about quickies? Yeah, Subaraya was definitely jerking themselves off. With this design of a headquarters. Like, this is probably, this is probably, like, in Subaraya's, like, fucking, like, Edge of like, concept book. It's like, this is what I want my headquarters to look like in the future. It, it looks like if Disneyland... Is this what they expected, like, 2007 Subaraya Productions to look like? No. So, he goes in, and he's like, I'm looking for Edge Subaraya. And they're like... Um, like, like the secretary's not, like, he's not uh, here. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. No, G- gets like one of the other like assistants to come up. It's like, hi, welcome to Super Eye Productions. How may I help you? Well, gets the executive director. Yeah, the executive director. Yeah, the guy's like, I'm gonna create Super Eye. He's like, well, you won't find him here, but if you go, if you went back to 1965, you'd find him when he's a bit more well. And they like guts later on talks about it's like, oh yeah, Super Eye Productions. It's like, yeah. Super I just died in like nineteen seventy and it's like, yeah. Yeah, he, he he did die in nineteen seventy. Yeah. Which I was a bit surprised that they went that like they're being like they're at least being honest with their own company. The head of like the guy that founded their company died. I was expecting alternate universe AG Super I show up and be like, Hey, how you doing? So Charlie Joe just goes, Oh, okay, he's in nineteen sixty five. Well, I'm going to 1965. Opens up this fucking time portal thing. Gets sucked in and gets sent to fucking 1965. Super I headquarters. And it's like black and white, even though you can clearly tell it's being filmed with a 90s camera. So that was really funny. But then it goes to color like later. And then fucking Daigo gets sucked in. And I, like, I was looking at him like, I swear to God, Daigo ends up going to 1965. <laughs> yeah, he gets really sucked to 1965. <laughs> so... You're not going to believe me, Doc. We got to go back to 1965. I don't believe it. And so they're they're filming an episode of Ultra Q or something like that. Because it's 1965, so Ultra Q was probably airing around then. Uh, they didn't really say when in 1965. But it was probably Ultra Q. It was definitely Ultra Q. Simply because we had... Like, I, I couldn't write down all the names because we were just watching the episode as... But uh, Subaraya was there. Subaraya's son was there. Yeah, uh, Haj, uh, Hajime Subaraya. Yeah, Because yeah. he, he was a director for a few episodes. But yeah, there was like a ton of people like in this. Hell, freaking Uhara Sho, uh, Shozo, who wrote like Go Ranger, Jack, uh, Return of Ultraman. Like, he was quickly shown in this episode. Like, it wasn't them... It was, like, actors playing them, but, like, just, there's an entire list of, like, actual people that showed up in this episode, and it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and so, like, one of the writers, or whatever, is trying to think of, uh, like, Con- yeah, Conchiro, he's trying to think of, like, right, like, a, a show, like, for, after Ultra Q, he just, he, he's just, you know, has writer's block. He's stumped. He can't think of anything. He's like fucking... This is getting, my eighth rewrite like, and the guy's not happy. Yeah, and like, he ends up like going out with his friends, getting drunk, and like... Talking about baseball, baseball the Beatles. And he's just, like, I can't fucking do this. And like, uh, so like when Daigo shows up, he accidentally gets mistaken for, for a, like a stagehand. Ha- named, Hajime. Uh, well, it was Nagano. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Nagano. And Nagano was the guy that he was uh, playing... And so, like, they're filming an episode, and, like, the, so, like, the actors are like, oh, it's a gaiju, and Ed Subaraya comes in, just like, no, 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 no. What, how would you actually react if you saw a giant fucking monster coming yeah, towards 15 you? 15-meter tall monster. Yeah, no, you're not gonna just go, uh, it's a monster. Oh. So he makes them redo the scene, and it shows them, like, fucking cowering and running for the stream for their lives, and it's like, there you Which go. Which is why I honestly hate when in, like, fan films and such like uh i was want you know i'll i'll quickly mention it because they'll probably never be brought up uh it was a power ranger one called power ranger unworthy mm-hmm. which involved like the first ranger in air quotes Ooh. in which he was fighting this like ranger team and then like he stabs tom like the ranger stabs tommy and like you know a uh, pink ranger like she sees this you know the person you love very much gets stabbed right in front of you yep no. No. No, you had to be like, no! Or, or, 
like well, not not that over dramatic, but it's like just I'm gonna turn like no, they're, turn, they're, turn, they're, turn around so it's not hitting the mic. No, like someone gets stabbed. No, no, like okay, good prime example. It's Amazing Spider-Man two when like Peter's like realizing she, he killed Gwen Stacy and like he's holding her and stuff. That's how you fucking that's mourn how you over act. a loved one. Just, um, if you're gonna commit to it, commit to it. So like one of the, the director like looks at like Dago's uniform and he's just like, oh, God, yeah, that's an anti monster uniform if I ever saw one. And so like Dago leaves because he sees Charge to like phase through the fucking wall. His face is in a wall, which like the CGI was like actually not that bad. Well, it's um, they're, they're getting there. Yeah, and so he chased after him, but then the real Nagano comes in and it's like, Hey, well, you changed already? He's like, What? What are you talking? So then, uh, so then we get back to Kanshiro, and he's, like, talking to Edge, Edge Super Rai, just being like, I, I can't fucking do this. He's like, well, you know what? Listen, I'll tell you. One night I was going out for a walk, and I was by a lake. Lake, uh, right, Ryan right, Nigo, I think. Yeah, it, like it, it was the, it was the same lake that oh. showed up in the first episode of Ultraman. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I went by a thing, and I saw this, like, thing crashed in the lake and then i just saw this guy standing here and he said his name was ultraman and it was funny because like he was using like the 1966 like ultraman voice was like i what that you are ultraman never uh, the m78 according to the wick according to the ultra wiki is again as much as we shouldn't be using that first source material yeah. i can at least go with this apparently that was the narrator from ultraman tiga Doing an imitation of were, 60s Ultraman. Yeah. Which, why didn't you just get 60s Ultraman? He was still alive at this point. So then, I'm just sitting here going, so, Edgy Tsuburaya got the inspiration to do Ultraman from Ultraman. Yes. I, 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 if I had my phone on me, it's over, it's charging somewhere else, but I would just play the fucking John Tron clip and just, what? What the fuck? <laughs> like, that, that, that's how, like, weird I was. So then later, like, Charge, uh, like, he goes, oh, so he's in the lake! And, like, he, like, his friend he's looking for, which is the, uh, space dinosaur Yanakagi. I got it. Yeah, that that essentially, and so he he summon he summons Yanakagi to the lake or like out of the lake, and so like Daigo follows him and he transforms into Tiga and he's like ah oh, no, Tiga Tiga, um and so they start fighting and then just who the fuck shows up Ultraman Ultraman and it's like that classic music where it's like. And so, like, we're like, like here, like, listens to this old Ultraman music, and I was like, wow, it's the really nostalgic. Yeah. Because, like, now we've watched all of Ultraman, so. It's funny because it's not actually the same Ultraman. No. It's from. Ult- it's a different universe Ultraman. Yeah. So it's Ultraman in Tiga's universe. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, according, it's a new, the new frontier universe. Okay. Um, so yeah, so he like charges up, recharges Tiga's color timer and they start like fighting together and it was pretty cool. And Which, it was him. a pretty short fight because yeah. it was this Zelpelion Ray with the Spacian Ray. They, cool. like, they defeat the, they defeat Yanakagi. Shake hands. And they just shake each hands. Other. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's the old beating the new. I'm like, that's pretty cool. And you just see like, Ultimate just goes shwatch and shwatch. flies off. And you can hear like the old school like sixties flying sound, and I was like, "That's cute." And, and Super, I was like, "Our next show should be about a year." Yeah. Yeah, and then they start filming the first episode of Ultraman. Which I don't remember the first episode of Ultraman featuring a city, city, uh, place. Yeah. Fuck uh, it. Uh, well, uh, didn't you say like they recorded like they filmed like other episodes before? Like you were like, "Oh, this this episode, uh, episode four was like the first episode they filmed." Episode two was the first episode they filmed, which was in the city. There you go. There we go. Uh, Su- Super Ryan knows their continuity. Okay. They're, they're good on that shit. Um, and so then it ends with like them just showing like old school Ultraman footage. And I was like, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Like I'm just Rick Dalton. Like, oh. there's me. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> this was not the crossover episode I was expecting. 
But it was at least really it, it was it was entertaining. It kept my attention. I was I was pretty impressed. I mean to celebrate thirty years of Ultraman. I, I feel like it was you know, we only got twenty minutes to do it. But now I want that. I want like a fucking movie about like a full like, on like, like biopic about, about how the, the, the concept of Ultraman was actually like made. You want the best part about all that? Hmm? That is fully documented. Every single detail, every single like little piece of information that we ever had for behind the scenes yeah. stuff, it's there in Japan. Make a movie about Super Andrew Superman's life, like do, like the same way he did the Shinomori fucking oh special. Yeah, have it be like his early work, like go from like Godzilla to like, and then he ends Hulk. like with like whatever the last project he did before he passed away. Uh, I can't remember what it was. But no, like that, I would actually love to see that. That'd be really fascinating. Same. So, um, but yeah, so what a, what a fucking crossover! I was not expecting that, that to be that like that. So. And it was a good way to have like a lighthearted Tiga episode because we know that we're in the end game now. We're in the end game. Up there, that's end game. Yeah, epi- uh, we know thanks to the Japanese Wikipedia page, episode fifty and episode fifty, fifty one, fifty two. Is the finale. So, ne- next episode of Ultra Ranger. Not yet. Oh. I think before we go into the Tiga finale, I have a feeling we should probably finish up Tiger first. No! Yeah, sorry to keep you waiting, everyone. But next episode, episode 123, we'll be taking a look at the final four episodes of Ultraman Tiger. Oh, uh, yeah, we're getting this over with. <laughs> Well, no. It's time to... We're, we're wrapping up. We're hanging into our finales. So it'll be a long one, because we'll be talking about four episodes, and then our overall thoughts of Ultra and Taiga. Yeah. Pretty much what we can remember. Because we oh. we have we have watched this throughout, like, almost from, a whole year's time. From July of freaking 2019. To May. To May of 2020. So, like, ten months. Ten took, months. Ten months it took us to w- talk about the entirety of Ultra and Taiga. Uh, that should not be. We should be able to talk about finish it by like January, at least. Which is why for Ultraman Z, we're gonna wait until all, we're gonna talk about the first episode to get those views, and then and, we'll yes. watch the rest of the show once it's all done. Yes, but we will be watching it on our own spare time. Yes. So, so if you want to ask us what we think of a certain thing, just tweet at us. Yeah, just tweet at. We got twitters. Yeah. We used to have a bumper at the end of our episode talking, uh, show me where you could follow us. Throw us a quickie, come on. Throw us a quickie, come on. <laughs> I'm just going to make that a fucking terminal. You know what? That's a shirt. Throw us a quickie. Yeah, throw us a quickie. <laughs> oh, no. Trust me, I already added another shirt. It's just going to be me, like, in that onion pose, just being, like, <laughs> like edging my hand. Just like, come on, give, give us a quickie. Throw us a quickie. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, onion. Oh, onion. 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 Uh, um, anyways, so that's it, everyone. Yeah, that's up to 122. Yeah. It's, uh, he, 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 he was... Horrified. He, he was horrified. Oh, I cannot wait for that thumbnail. It's going to be fucking incredible. You know what? I feel like making that thumbnail, like, tonight oh, or tomorrow. It. Please. Even though I still have episodes to do, I want to get that one out just fucking, to show it to you. Fucking do it. I will die. Um, anyways, everyone... Thank you for joining us. Yes. And schwa for now. Schwa for now.